everybody. Welcome to Bones Collector. Today on Bones Collector, we're continuing our series where Lori and I are playing our way through our board gaming library. The reason why we're doing this, of course, is to show you up close and personal the mechanics and what the game looks like physically on the table. In the top 10 videos and top 100 videos that we do, we only talk about each game in a few brief sentences, and it's very difficult for the viewer to understand what that game is about. So I'm hoping that by doing this, you will have a clearer picture, actually, on how the game plays and what it looks like and whether you would like it or not, because ultimately that's why you're watching, right? So we're going to play a couple of games, two or three games, each week and make a video about it and pass it on to you and I hope you enjoy them. Hey you guys, how you doing? I'm going to talk about To Call today and before I do I want to let you know that I we filmed this episode earlier, lost the footage somehow and so I'm redoing it. It's been a while since I played it but I'm going to try and tell it to you as accurately as I can so you can figure out how to play this game. But I, want, I always like uh, showing the games right after we play them because you get to see what the board looks like and all the pieces and everything, so I apologize for that. In this particular instance, this and Awari Deluxe, we lost the video footage and just had to throw it back down on the table and, and uh, refill it. So here we go. This is to call This game, let me see, came out in 1999. It's Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer, my favorite board game design duo in the world. And it's two to four players. It uses an action point system, area majority and influence, and grid movement. And there is an auction in the advanced game, and the winning condition is most points. And you can see the scoring track going around the board here. Let me talk a little bit about this game. If you buy this game from super, with the Super Meeple version, uh, that's what this is. I don't think it comes with English instructions in it. We had to print them off of Board Game Geek, but it's no big deal. It's worth it just to get this game because it's a fantastic game and the production is phenomenal by Super Meeple. But it's a beautiful linen board, uh, chunky big tiles that you're going to lay out for exploration. And we have this, and you have these chunky temple layers that you're going to build because that's part of what you're doing here. And this insert doesn't come with it. Somebody printed this off and I bought this off the virtual flea market when I went to Dice Tower Con East. And this is really nice though. I mean, everything, all the tiles lay neatly in that bottom piece right there, and then all the pieces go in this second layer, and it goes in there uh, together. But man, this is just phenomenal uh, insert. It's, it was made specifically for this game, so that's pretty cool. We also have printed off an instruction sheet for a game called Mini to Call, which cuts the time play in half, because when you play to call, it's going to be a 90-minute affair. I don't usually like to play games that long, but to call goes kind of, feels like it goes quickly because you're going to be building and exploring and uh, trying to do the best you can with gathering treasures and so forth, and it just doesn't feel like it's that long, so it's not that bad. And I'm going to keep it because it's a terrific game and I love Kramer and Kiesling. So in this game, this action point system that you're going to use, you get a nice player aid to help you with it, but you're going to be placing workers everything you do costs points and it has the points on this side of the card so if you're placing workers in the base camp it's going to cost you a point for each one you put in there and you get 10 points on your turn so you're going through the math in your head let's see what i want to do this is going to cost me two this is going to cost me one uh, this is going to cost me three uh, if i want to put one of my uh, tents out on a tile if i were to have a if we were explored clear out here and I want to put a tent on, I can't use that one. <laughs> if, I want, if I want to put a tent out here, uh, I had to spend five. That cost me five to put that tent out there. But the advantage to that is now I don't have to put them in base camp here. I can bring them from my supply over to that point on the board. And that it makes it easier to get to the other areas of the board. So that's pretty important. However, I did play a game one time where I didn't even do that. And I think I did pretty good. <laughs> But uh, sometimes it behooves you to do that. Other times you think, ah, it's too far. I'm too deep into the game, and that cost me five action points, and there's other things I want to get done, so I'm not going to do that. But, uh, yeah, I played one whole game without putting any tents up. So that was pretty cool. And then, again, you use this player aid, and it tells you how much everything costs. Now, these, there's different tiles that you're going to come out, and at the beginning of your turn, the first thing you do is draw one of these tiles. When the stack runs out, the game's over, 
And what's going to happen while you're going through this deck of tiles, in here are three volcano tiles. And once you pull a volcano tile, you set it down, and then you begin scoring. And this is the pretty, this is pretty neat, one of the pretty neat things about to call. Each player scores separately from the other player, so that one player will move all their explorers around trying to get majorities in all the areas they can and then score and then the next player will move all their stuff around trying to get majorities because you get 10 action points to spend right before you score so each player spends 10 action points you can move people around trying to get majorities spending those points and then you do your score and then the next player does the same thing spending 10 action points moving people around doing what they can to get the majority in some of these territories around these temples and that's how you score in this game and once you go through that stack of tiles there will be an end game scoring also now what, uh, there's a couple of different types of tiles that are going to come out in this game and this one here that I'm showing you is one of the, a base for a temple you're going to start building a temple on that one this is a level one and as you get down through the stack there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G there's a lot of tiles with letters on them in this stack and as you go down the stack you know, you're going down the alphabet and so this in le this is a, an A tile so it starts out with a temple level of one but I think as you get down in the stack there's temple levels that begin at four and five so that's pretty cool and then you don't have to build it up so high to get to uh, level 10 which is what you see here with this temple at the beginning of your turn of course you're going to select a tile and you're going to play that tile on the board and then spend your 10 action points now you can also during the game claim two towers like you see here two that's the limit that once you put your worker up on there if you've got the majority in that area you can put one of your explorers up on top of that temple and remove the rest of your explorers from the game so it hurts to do make that claim but nobody else can get the points for that tower now this one's at 10 and a lot of times you may not have a 10 uh, high temple but I just did this for purposes of showing the game but sometimes it may only go to maybe you think eight okay or even seven that's enough I've got the majority right there I'm going to claim that tower for myself and I will score that every time we score in the game that scores that number of points for me only so you can do that twice during the game if you're lucky enough to get a, ten, a stack of ten that's pretty cool you know you get ten points every time you score that's pretty nice so you want to pay attention to trying to do that and taking an opportunity when it presents itself and that's what you end up building is these temples and they'll be all different levels like I say they'll end up being you know level three and four by the end of the game because you can't don't have a lot of turns to build things but when you do get one that's built up pretty good you may want to try and claim it as and you put your uh, explorer on there he's called a guard so he's now he's a guard and he's guarding that temple for you and, and no one else can claim those points but you do lose any of the explorers on that tile that helped you gain the majority they come out of the game so you gotta use your head on that one other tiles are just regular plain tiles that have graphs on them that you're going to move through and each one of these tiles has these stones you see on the edges and that's how many movement points it's going to cost you to go across those stones in this case there's one there one there and one there so when you enter or leave this tile and you have to leave on those paths those stone paths you're going to have to pay that now if that's against this tile here if it's been placed like this now you've got one on that tile and two on the treasure tile so if you want to go from the treasure tile to this tile it's going to cost you three action points and that's the type of things you're going to be doing in this game this treasure tile when it comes out automatically four this one says four but it, however many of these golden idols you see on that tile that's how many treasures are going to go on that tile that match the number of the golden idols you see on that tile in this case it's four so we put four treasures on there and then we're going to go fight over that <laughs> because those are pretty nice every time you score you're going to score your treasures your treasure tiles that you have taken in this game and and it's a set collection thing and it tells you on your player aid if you have one treasure token it scores you one point for a pair you get three points if you've got three of a kind you get six points and that it can really be huge if you can manage to get three of a kind but they're face down and you're drawing them at random you're going to go to these treasure tiles and pick those up and who knows what you're going to get you're just going to go get them and then if you're fortunate enough to have them match up in pairs and 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 three of a kind hey that's great 
but it is a set collection scoring mechanism and they score every time you score in the game every volcano and at the, the end of the game so you're going to go around the scoring track pretty pretty fast so that's pretty cool and in this game because you have 10 action points you it's sometimes easy to lose track of how many points you spent during your turn Lori printed this off board game geek and it says to call on it and it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and we put a meeple on here and as we spend our points we start out with ten and as we spend our points we just move the meeple around to show that we've spent that many points that way we know where we're at because you may find yourself in a situation where you say, oh, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. I'm going to back up. But in, if you don't use something like this tracker, you could get uh, to a point where you didn't remember how many points you spent and where you've gone and those kinds of things. So this is uh, it's really helpful for people our age, for sure. So we really enjoy that. And that's kind of one of the wraps on this game. If anybody complains about to call, it's about the fact that you may have a turn where you don't spend all your action points. And I think in Cusco and Mexico, which are the two games that followed this, it was a trilogy of area control games, I think they found, uh, Kramer and Kiesling put a mechanism in those games where you get to spend your leftover action points. In Decal, you do not. So you want to be very efficient with your planning, very efficient with your spending of your action points. And at the end of the game is where I find that that may happen. You know, your last turn, maybe you've got your guys where just about where you want them. There's not much for you to do. There's no building that you need to do, no treasures to pick up, those kinds of things. And you may find yourself with a couple of action points left over in one of your turns, which is no big deal. That's just the way it is. It's a small flaw, but it's a wonderful game. And it, the wonderful game far outweighs that one little problem. And that's the only problem I found in this game. I love this game, and it's, the rule set's very simple. It's exploration, and, and treasure, reset collection, and temple building, and area majority, area influence game. From the first time we played it, we were in love with it. Again, this game came out in 1999, so it is one of the oldest games in our library. I think Sequence from the 80s is the only game that's older. But we, uh, it's one of the oldest games that we still have in our library and I love it. I won't, don't see it ever going anywhere because again it's just an easy rule set and fun to play. It's fun to play these, this game. I mean just trying to get the majority and sometimes I mean late in the game you may go down this stack of tiles. I mean there's so many things you can do uh, like this is a, a this tile is a six. It's going to start as a six. This temple. So it may be out here in no man's land. And you know what? Nobody. You may never get to build that. But if you can get one of your explorers on that tile, and nobody else is on that, you're going to score six points for not doing anything. Just having that tile come out late in the game, and there you go. That's where you're going to pick up a lot of points. You don't really have to build these temples really high. You just have to have the majority at the right time in the game. And, uh, and score those points. It doesn't matter how high they are, the base tiles also score with nothing on them when it has a, a temple base like that. So that's pretty cool. So just ah, a lot of things going on in this game. It's really neat. Once you take a tile off the top of this stack, placing this tile is very important. But you have to tell yourself, this game's going to go on a long time. If everybody sits and thinks for five minutes about where to place a tile, it's really going to drag it out. You have to, uh, and when Laura and I play it, we just tell each other, hey, we're just going to, you just take a tile and make up your mind as quickly as possible where to place that. Don't agonize over it. It's very important where you put it, but try and think ahead of the game and and tell yourself, okay, well, Will, if I get this tile, if I get something there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And you have to place those tiles according to how many stones there are in the path because you want to Maybe put that where you can get to it with as few of action points as possible uh, when you're traveling around the map. So those kinds of things come into play. But just, yeah, we grab a tile off the top, look at it, kind of weigh things out a little bit and kind of think about where that would be best for me to put that tile and slap it down. If you agonize over that, it's going to drag the game out and it's, then you know, you're, you're going to be sitting at the gaming table for longer than you like. But yeah, it's a wonderful game. Absolutely phenomenal. A great design by these guys, and I've got so many games by them. I always, always uh, try to explore their board games. Okay, that's it for To Call. I hope you enjoyed this, and again, this is going to be in our library. I know a lot of you probably have this game. We were very late to getting this. I played Cusco. I have not played Mexico. 
I like Cusco, but I like this better than Cusco. So uh, I'd like to play Mexico, and I probably will at an upcoming convention. But hey, that's the call. We love it. Hey, you guys. Welcome to Bones Collector. And we just got done playing Awari, the deluxe edition. And we loved it. <laughs> if you've watched the channel at all, you know that we were going to love this game. I've been looking for a copy for this for quite a while, and Awari came out in 2020 in this version. This is a re-implementation of an older game that came out years ago, but they uh, reskinned it and, and made it uh, this beautiful deluxe package. And it's a game designed by Michael Schacht, and it's for one to six players. It's a simple area control game, and the winning condition is the most points. So first of all, I want to tell you about the quality of this game. The box is very thick and nice. Uh, this game, everything in it is wonderfully produced. You know, you got an insert that holds all the big heavy pieces, faction pieces, and the cards are linen, beautiful cards, the board is thick, the scoring board is even thick. All the tents and these feet tokens are all wooden, and except these totems are big chunky, some kind of a rosin thing, so very nice. And we have eight map boards in this box. Excuse me, there's four boards, double-sided, eight maps. So that's pretty nice. And uh, in the retail edition, I think there is only one double-sided map. So this game is hard to find, retail or otherwise. When I saw this pop up on the VFM, I went ahead and grabbed it. And I paid $50 for it, which I was willing to do, because, again, the package is fantastic. And it has a, this deluxe edition has some things in it, a, an extra faction of cards and stuff that isn't in the retail edition, which I didn't need, but I like having all the maps, I will admit, so that you can play this game a lot, because it plays very quickly. Two-player now. Uh, from half an hour to 45 minutes if you're slow, but usually about half an hour you can play this game. And it's simply, like I say, an area control game. You're going to be playing these biome cards, they're called, and you will play them according to their color, and where whatever their color is matches a territory on the board, and you will place a tent or a totem in that territory uh, given the color of the card. If you have two of one card, that can be used as a wild, so it can be used at a, for another territory of any color. So that's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice option. And when you take your, after you've taken your turn, of course, you're going to draw your hand back up to three. There's always four cards showing in the market, and you can draw those uh, in any way you want. You can draw off the top of the deck, or you can draw from the market. But if you see two two cards face up like this that are the same, that's a wild card, so you probably want to take that. Uh, not Maybe not at the end of the game, but during during game play. Most of the time you want those uh, doubles so that you can play whatever you want to. I forgot to mention, this game also comes with uh, nice player aid cards that you can use when you're playing the game. And on them it has the golden rule, the Lawari golden rule. It's three, two, one rule. You can play three cards to place up to two pieces in one territory. And that holds true except if the territory is unexplored. In that case, you can only place one. So that's, that's a big deal. And then when you're placing totems in these territories, you can only, the totem pole can only be as high as the majority leader tent's colors. So in other words, if you were placing a totem in this territory, it could be, let's see, the leading, the person that owns this territory, or the one that has the most in this territory, is the green player. One, two, three. The gold has one, two, three. So green and gold both have three in this territory. So this totem can only be three high, so I'd have to take that one off there. Yeah. One, two, three. The totem can only be as high as the majority of, uh, of whoever has the most tents in that territory. And that's what determines how high the totem can be. And then you score the points for the person that's going to score the points in the totem, of course, is the one that has the most of his color, player color, in that totem. And these are scored in pairs. In other words, there's links between each one of these territories, and you use this little totem pole to go around, and you're going to score them accordingly. And you put your this, this wonderful uh, heavy metal totem pole on the uh, number as you score and then you go through all the numbers and score the board. Now halfway through the game, which is when you go through this deck completely, that's going to trigger a tent scoring phase. You're going to score territories by who has the majority of tents. And then you'll begin the second phase of the game. You know, you reshuffle these cards and 
put the deck back down and then you're going to go through the deck one more time and after you've gone through that deck a second time that's going to trigger the end game scoring where you're going to do not only tents but you're going to do the totems and you're going to do the settlements you're going to do the settlements settlements are when you have a contiguous group of your color on the board in this case here let's see what we got here We've got one, two, three. No, that doesn't score. You have to have at least four. And yellow has one, two, three, four right here. So you, you will be able to score four points, I believe, for that, those four, that run of four tenths. So yeah, you get a point for every tenth, but a minimum of four. So you have to have at least four of your color in a row. And that's how you score the settlements. Now the tents, of course, are who has the most in the territory, and totems, when you, you use this totem pole to do the totem scoring, and you put it down on a number, you would, this is the number six, and it's going to score this territory and this territory, and it would be between these two totems right here. Well, uh, gold has, yellow player has the majority here, but does not have any majority there. In order to score, you have to have the majority in both territories. Yeah, so you'll go through all the numbers, uh, moving this totem around and scoring two territories at a time and that's the scoring of the game. So you have tents, majority, you have tents in settlements and you have the totem majorities and that's the three ways to score in this game and it goes pretty quickly but it's pretty deep too. Right? The way you're placing those uh, totems and playing your cards and going to different territories you have to plan where you want to put because you only have a limit. You're going to have a limited amount of these totem pieces available so you want to place them very very wisely and think about where you're putting them. Now in a two-player game you have a dummy player represented by this blue stack of totems here and they will be populating the board also. You, each player takes turns controlling the blue player and playing those pieces on the board. You have whatever's left over in your hand you have to use one of those cards to place a piece out on the board. Now if you play all three of your cards on your turn you don't have to do anything with the blue player and that blue player can do pretty well in this game. You have to be careful where you place it so you're not interrupting your own uh, tent um, settlements or territory majorities. So that's kind of uh, the thought process, part of the thought process that goes into playing this game. But yeah, that's the blue player and it's a great implementation of I like dummy players because you can use that dummy player to help yourself and hurt your opponent and that's what makes having a dummy player a lot of fun. It adds a little bit more depth to the strategy of what you're trying to do in, the, in a Wari Deluxe. And that's the crux of this game. I really, really enjoy it. Lori and I have played it quite a few times since we have. We've only had this game for a month. We've played it five times already and I really enjoy it. Again, it's a half hour affair so you can sit down and play this two or three times within 90 minutes and that's pretty nice. And that's the type of games we enjoy. And we enjoy the tactile nature of the production of this game, all these big heavy pieces and the beautiful look of it. Again, it's, it's our type of game because it plays very quickly. Also in the box are some end game goal cards that can be used that are pretty nice and they have certain ways you score by placing tents or totems and I think these feet tokens you can use to score. If you put one of these feet tokens out in the territory it's going to double the points of that territory but be careful because if you're going to place a feet token you better make sure you're the one with that's going to get the majority in that territory because it's going to double whoever wins the territory not necessarily the person that places the feet token. So there's some, some stuff in this game that's a lot of fun and uh, again I love having all the maps We've been, we were looking for this game for quite a while, and it's pretty difficult to find right now. Hopefully, they'll do another print run and make it more accessible to everyone. But that's the Wari Deluxe, and I love this game, and that's it for this episode. And I wanted to tell you, I should have told you up front, we lost our video for the uh, when we made this, you know, played this game. We made a video, we were going to put it out and uh, get it edited and we lost the footage of it somehow this and to call so uh, I'm sorry about the delayed reaction for this but uh, I had to get the game out and set it up so you may see some things that are incorrect here and I apologize for that but this is a terrific game a Wari Deluxe. Okay everybody that was a couple of games out of our library that we wanted to share with you. We're doing this video series to show you in depth, a little more in depth about the games that we have in our library and what it's like to play them so that you can take a look at them physically what they look like on the table. 
And also I wanted to tell you that it, these videos probably don't come out as often or as frequent as I would like them to because we're very busy. We have lives that we continue on with and with grandchildren and so forth and children that we have. And so we're very busy in that regard, like you guys are. And I don't ask for money. I don't get paid for this at all. Lori and I just do this because we want to share our passion. The only payday that I get is when you comment on the videos or when you tell me, I think one of my viewers, Christoph, told me, hey, I, I bought a copy of Aqualin because you recommended it and I played it with my kids and we loved the game. You were correct. It's a very good game. That's my payday. That's the type of thing that make me feel good. Uh, they, it goes way beyond a monetary reward and thank you for those comments and, and please keep them coming. We'll try to get back to you as often as we possibly can. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll try to get them out as soon as possible. And always remember to keep on board gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. Bye-bye.